Hi, everybody. Hi. We're live. <laughs> uh, my name is Melissa Deckert. And I'm Nicole Lay. And together we are Party of One Studio. We are a creative studio based in Brooklyn, New York. And we're going to be live with you for the next two days talking about how we started our business, um, how we use personal projects to get new business, um, and more specifically today and tomorrow, how we use Photoshop to bring our visual designs to life, Yeah. Um, both in personal work and in client work. Yes. Um, and we'll be checking in with the chat. We want to hear your questions about the Photoshop that product, I mean, <laughs> project that we're uh, doing, but also your questions about building your career and getting started um, in design and also running a studio. Any questions you have there would be great. Yeah. Um, so yeah, stay active in the chat. We do have a chat and win today as mm -hmm. usual. Um, you can win some free stickers from Sticker Mule, so stay active in there and ask us your questions. Yeah. Um, we're also going to be doing portfolio reviews in about an hour and a half, so be sure to submit your portfolios. We're really excited to see what you guys come up with. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we do have a uh, full schedule today, um, and you can see... Um, so today, you just watched the Daily Creative Challenge with Voodoo Val. Her eye makeup was on point. Yes. Um, <laughs> we are going to be with you from 9.30 until 11 today. And then following up, Adobe XD Creative Challenge with Sam Anderson at 11.30 and an XD case study with Eric Sue. Yep. So All stay right. tuned. It's going to be a good day. Yes. Um, so let's talk a little bit about yeah, ourselves. Who are we? It. Why are you watching? All right. <laughs> So, we are Party of One Studio, as I said. And we can have, um, we have a little image to share with you. Yeah. Um, so you can follow along with us at Party of One Studio. Our handle is here in case you want to check out our work. But as I said, we are a creative studio that's based in um, Brooklyn, New York, in Greenpoint. Um, and we create um, a lot of visual campaigns for different brands. We do a lot of our own prop styling and um, handmade sets and photography. So that's what we're going to be getting into today in um, our Photoshop demos today and tomorrow. Yeah, but just to spend a minute uh, to talk about where we're from and how mm -hmm. we find ourselves together here yeah. today. So um, I am, I actually am from uh, New York and Massachusetts, but um, I've been in New York for a long time and I studied fine art uh, at Cooper Union. So I have a little bit of a different background and a different path to design. Um, and Melissa? Um, I am from Austin, Texas. Um, so I grew up there and then I moved to New York as well to go to Pratt Institute for college. Um, and I have been in, in New York ever since. So right after college, I studied um, while I was there. I kind of bounced around. I did fine art initially and then went into illustration and um, ended up in graphic design and got a Comd degree. But I definitely love to incorporate and always kind of love to incorporate um, handmade elements into my work. And that was a big part of um, what I brought into my graphic design practice as well. Um, so after I graduated, um, I had a few different internships. I worked a little bit in advertising. I worked at a small studio um, that did a lot of stationery and wedding design, which was a little bit more tactile. Um, and then my kind of first big job opportunity, I guess, was um, at Etsy at their brand design studio. They were building it out. And that's where we both met. Nicole actually was one of the people that interviewed me. This is like seven, eight years ago, almost. I think eight, yeah. Um, and yeah, so we met there for the first time. The team was pretty small. There yep. were only about four people in the Brooklyn office. And now it's like very, very big, about 50 people, I think, on the design team or more. Um, but yeah, I started there, um, yes. I guess, kind of as a mid-level designer, and Nicole had already been working there for a bit. Yes, and um, I was definitely um, one of the members of the team that was very involved with using a lot of handmade elements in design, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, just really trying to bring the ethos of Etsy to life in the stuff that we were putting out. So I was really excited to see Melissa's work when she um, came by for an interview. And we really started working very closely together on a lot of larger campaigns. Yeah, we were definitely in the trenches there. We would often kind of volunteer to do a lot of the tactile and handmade work that went along with campaigns, which is sort of how we got into this, um, the type of work that we're doing now. Yeah. So we would often be building out um, paper craft sets or sort of more tactile um, typographic compositions to be used within the ad and um, event campaigns that were done at Etsy. 
Yeah. So after you know our time there, we sort of decided maybe we want to go off on our own and really pursue this more because the company was growing and it wasn't as feasible to do these really tactile things for these international campaigns or, or projects that we were working on. Um, so we each sort of took an independent path. Yes. Um, working, I was working kind of more in a traditional graphic design sense, freelancing. Um, I was working a bit more in lettering at that time, but we would often collaborate with one another. Yeah, I started leaning more into um, hand-built illustration work that was photo-based, um, a lot of paper craft and um, just sets and designs for uh, magazines, editorials, things like that. Mm -hmm. And we found that we really so enjoyed working together that we would get together just for fun and sort of work on cathartic projects to, I don't know, alleviate stress and make things and sort of set some uh, stringent um, boundaries for ourselves or parameters where we would have to make something, create something in one day and just get it out into the world and just mm -hmm. sort of blow off some steam and have a little bit of fun. But I think we can even maybe jump into like where we are today. Yeah, you want to switch over to so, our website on Nicole's computer. Yeah. So you'll see a lot of work. We are definitely really um, in love with color and bringing a lot of those hand-built elements still today into our work. Um, I'm going to quickly scroll through mm -hmm. and then we can dial in to a couple of projects that we can speak more specifically yeah. about. So something I think really important in our work is, as I said before, bringing in that tactile element. So what we're going to be talking about today in a little bit is um, sort of our whole process for going through um, a personal project in this case and how we use that to promote ourselves. Um, as we started out doing a lot of personal work together, that is really important to our studio and it's a way that we're able to get our personalities across and sort of infuse every project with all of the aspects of the work that we really value, which is that handmade element, um, having something sort of fun or a surprise within a lot of our Scroll imagery. Quickly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know, always sort of making something custom. So this is a great example of how we often work with clients, which we're going to talk about more tomorrow. So tune in yeah. for that. Um, but this was um, a campaign that we worked on for the summer for Otherland, which is a candle company in Brooklyn. So we hand built all of these sets to really represent um, the labeling, which was designed by another artist. Um, but sort of bring that to life yep. in this surreal, um, magical way. So yeah. there are a lot of fun elements in here, including like a shallow wading pool or yeah. reflection pool that we made out of an old mirror that we had to kind of caulk and seal and turn into this little two-inch pool. Yeah, a real common theme in our work is it often has um, an otherworldly feel <laughs> <laughs> or unreal feel, but we really do try to build and capture as much as we can in real life. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this this water wading pool is actually a really fun challenge. Um, creating often... these uh, textures and colors and really getting some real um, lovely reflections. Mm -hmm. We're so. often repurposing items that we have in our studio or materials that you may not expect to see in the yeah. context that they're in. For example, these sort of marbleized pieces mm -hmm. are all um, faux painted to look yeah. like real marble, but are actually a combination of foam and foam core and yeah. cardboard um, and different things that you may not expect. Yeah. So. We can go into another example as we well, sure quickly, can. for just, Lishinary, perhaps. Yeah, let's do that. Um, yeah, just to show so much of our work really is in the planning, um, concepting, building, and then, as we'll get to in just a few moments, the retouching mm -hmm. and finessing yeah. of these images. And I just noticed someone brought up in the chat um, oh, yeah. photography. So we often do a lot of our own yep. photography. In the case of this project, we did photograph it ourselves. And we'll be talking a little bit more about that um, once we get into the project today. But we do also work with photographers at times, like in the previous project for Otherland, that was with another photographer. So we kind of bounce back and forth yep. just depending on what the project is. Yep. Um, but this is an, another example of a campaign we did on a much smaller scale for a jewelry company called Lishinary. Um, so you can see these these earrings and pieces of jewelry are very, very tiny. So we had to build this little teeny set of this sort of Grecian architectural world. Yes, um, really fall in love with this very thin balsa for this project. <laughs> um, but these really were I extreme miniatures. So mm -hmm. it, it gave us an opportunity to really just focus on the details, which is always a really fun mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. And then we can also show a couple examples of our um, more photo illustration work sure. for um, editorial, which we also often do. And it's a great opportunity to kind of bring more 
um, crazy ideas to life. Yeah, um, and so from very tiny to very, very large, mm -hmm. uh, this was a huge uh, set for us. We actually rigged our camera up on a, a crossbar for our seamless to capture this, which filled the entire floor of our studio, <laughs> or a, a good large part. Yeah. So this was an editorial mm -hmm. for the Washington Post. They do a yearly spring cleaning edition. Um, so it's all about the physical and emotional and metaphorical things that you are letting go of um, each year. So yeah. we incorporated a lot of that into the photograph, um, brought in a lot of elements from our prop closet, which is very useful to us. We're always pulling from there. So yeah. we got everything on the floor and shot this huge overhead image and um, comped in the lettering as well. Yeah, so that's a real opportunity for us to really be combining the digital and the real. So um, we definitely plan this photograph with the lettering in mind and laid out things. Um, but all of the lettering was added in mm -hmm. Photoshop later. Yeah. And there are also a lot of really fun spots yeah. in oh, here yeah. that were really simple, leading mm -hmm. to some of the other articles that um, people were talking about and stories they were telling about what they were letting go of that season. And here again, we have a nice combination of, um, you know, of course, retouched images, but like some real and some uh, created digitally. So this book really was ripped. <laughs> <laughs> this had some like extra love given to it because it was not quite a paper shredder. <laughs> um, there's some digital manipulation here. All real. All real. And really <laughs> burnt some photos. High school photos. Um, with some digital comping of flame. So and we're going to actually talk a little bit about how yeah. to make those flames in our um, project yeah. coming up. But I think we can probably start moving in that direction. I yeah. Mean, yeah. Yeah, so let's get into um, what we're going to be working on today. So as I said, um, a lot of our work does oh, come from... Um, let's give a little shout out <laughs> to the chat first. Hi, hey. everybody. Hey, <laughs> hey Michelle, Jordan. Hi. Thanks so much. <laughs> oh, my gosh. They were talking about your voice before, Nicole. Very oh, soothing. nice. Oh, wonderful. Wait till it gets real squeaky. It'll happen. As a fan <laughs> of ASMR, I'm very into this whole thing. <laughs> Um, if anyone knows what that is, let me know in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> um, that is real. Yeah. But getting into yeah. the project that we're going to be editing today. Um, what I was talking about before, we, we do a lot of personal work, and we like to use that as our self-promotion in gaining new business. Um, so this was a project that we sort of dreamed up as partially um, a way of announcing that we were starting to work together. Our studio has been officially together for almost two years now. Yeah. Um, so this was something that we sent out about a year in to remind everyone like, hey, we're working together. It's the two of us. We like to create um, photographic imagery for your brand or your product. Um, we love to create things that are magical and bring in our custom props and um, you know, handmade elements. So I feel like this image really kind of encapsulated all of those things. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, just, I'm just recapping, right? Like just bringing together this autumnal feel, mm -hmm. maybe a little witchiness. I know, it felt good for the season because it is October and that is when we yeah. created the image initially. So we're bringing yeah. in the fall vibes for you guys. And even for a personal project, just to, you know, go through, we definitely do spend a lot of time sitting across each other um, from each other at a desk and brainstorming ideas and sometimes we'll come up with ideas for a project that we sort of like put on a shelf for later and mm -hmm. this was one of them. Um, we were working with a really wonderful band trying mm -hmm. to um, come up with some really fun concepts for their album cover and this originated there and when we didn't go for it we kind of knew we wanted to circle back. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and we wanted to capture something, like I said, something autumnal, moody, have some sort of um, atmospheric lighting, but we really do shoot, this is something we shot ourselves and we shoot in our studio, so we had to do a lot to really create that mm -hmm. outdoors feeling indoors. And I even brought some um, real props, but maybe we can open up Yeah, let's the open up bridge. bridge. Oh, Melissa loves bridge. <laughs> we can talk about that. Well, yeah, since, since we do a oh, lot of... I can do it on mine. Um, oh, since we yeah. do a lot of that work together, um, <laughs> we often do our photo shoots together, of course, and um, I use Bridge all of the time, maybe not in the way that it was intended, but I love to use it to kind of look at an overview of all of our work and see yeah. it um, in a really easy, easily editable thumbnail way. And um, I, it's really like actually taught me a lot. Um, I'm definitely, we use Dropbox a lot, and I'm just like scrolling through trying to find what I need and having, being able to like collect all of your images or things that you're interested in seeing, even comparing and 
casting in Bridge is really helpful. Mm -hmm. But I do have our project called Fire Fingers already <laughs> here. And you can see we have some, we organize you know, our projects in this way where we have some behind the scenes. We have all of our raw images we shoot directly into our computers. Um, and our selects and then some social images. Mm -hmm. So we usually build out a project a few different ways, even for a personal project. Yeah, so we can get into um, yeah. the raw and sort of show you a bit of our process and shooting and how we usually come to what our final image is gonna be. Yeah, so let me go back to the raw. Sorry, I jumped ahead. <laughs> Um, so as I mentioned, so this is wild. <laughs> so yeah. this is kind of fun, and it creates almost a little like stop motion. So Ooh. you can see here uh, the image that we <laughs> conceived of for this was something for um, sort of the autumn vibe, where we have our two fingers coming together and creating this flame. So we wanted to sort of showcase ourselves in some way, our personality in the prop styling, mm -hmm. and then this idea of creation and creativity um, through this added little flame. Yeah. So we're gonna be showing you today um, how we created this image from the photography and some of the behind the scenes of creating the props, um, as well as you know the whole process of shooting, um, editing in Camera Raw, which is usually how we start, and then yeah. in Photoshop, um, all of our little tips and tricks for getting this comped image to look real. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I can dial in. You can see we shoot a lot when you're <laughs> your own model, you know. Uh, sometimes you need a, a few extra captures. But, um, yeah, I think the biggest thing was, with this was we wanted to sort of capture this this witchy vibe of being outside and having this um, sort of dark foliage coming in, which we rigged up in our studio. And we shoot everything indoors. So we have a space that's probably about, um, I don't know, 12 feet by 10 feet that we shoot in. And it's very flexible for, for what we need. So we build all of our props there and we set up our photo shoots there. Yep. Um, and so for this one, we had this really big, dark, black kind of velvet curtain backdrop that absorbed a lot of light and helped yeah. it feel like we were shooting um, outdoors. There was very low um, you know, light bounce. I'll larger so you all mm -hmm. can see. So we're opening up raw. And I actually really like um, doing an initial pass and clean up on images in mm -hmm. raw. So you can see this is like our unedited image. We plan yep. on cropping it in so you can actually see where, um, you know, the, the styling of these crazy sleeves meets our hand oh, that yeah. is just blue tape that oh, is taped on and fun, skin. Right, like you can see. So in the final <laughs> image, it looks like a full couture moment. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but really, um, just- We brought the sleeves with us to yeah, show you. Yeah, we just actually made these. So like so quickly, sewed these up in the studio, a lot of pinning, a lot of tape. I really wanted to get some like channeling in the blue sleeve, mm -hmm. which was really just temporary. So you can see that's not even there anymore. So that is just a real shirt yeah, that we got at a shirt. thrift store and put it on and then created these channeled rounds, which is what Nicole is wearing on the left in the yeah. photo yeah. out of um, some cotton rounds <laughs> that were stuffed in and some real, sewn into real these channels. for you all. Yeah, but in our final image, um, we actually found that we liked one hand from one image and one hand from another. And so that's when we're gonna, we'll get into the comping of the two, but before even doing that. So the, the actual capture, you know, it's looking pretty good. But um, like I said, I really do like, I saved my settings here, I believe. So you can do that always. Um, and this one is 89, so I'll just go here. I do save my settings. Oh. This is what's kind of great about working in RAW is that when mm -hmm. you're working collaboratively, if we come to a place in the settings that we um, kind of agree on as sort of a base pass before we even get into Photoshop, you can save those settings out and then load them into any image that you want. Um, so we often start this way just to kind of correct the, yeah, um, we always start the camera with, settings yep, and the initial let's make lighting. make sure we have that in. And sometimes I go a lot further. I would say that with RAW, um, we work so closely on these projects and we often pass our files back and forth. So once you've made changes in RAW, you're sort of, those are those are solid when you move into Photoshop and you do other retouching. So um, sometimes we do and sometimes we don't really like dig in here. And I can see in this one, I didn't go that far, but I just did want to talk about the flexibility a little bit, just because there is so much you can do. Um, you can pump up your saturation, which I often like to do. You can, well, just even using the auto, you can see what a change that would make for your mm -hmm. photo. We wanted to keep it moody, so we... We wanted to keep it moody, for sure. You can change your lighting. There's even some 
Okay. I'm gonna keep it as shot there. I see in the chat someone's talking about drag race rags to couture. We can really relate well, to hello. that. I feel like so much of what we do <laughs> is um, taking these odd materials and just scraps that we have left over and trying to transform them into something elevated and a little bit more exciting. So yeah, absolutely. Any comparison to drag race is awesome. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, there's even some like presets in here that are that can be really, really helpful if you want to be moving quickly and just getting um, going on your image mm -hmm. just straight straight away. But so for this one, um, we actually did leave it pretty close, and you'll see that we did a lot of our retouching actually in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. So maybe yeah, and a lot of this too is um, mm -hmm. a pass that we really just wanted to make on the lighting. So we shot a few different versions. Which you. if you go back in Bridge, perhaps yeah, um, you can see. I cancel that out. Some of the places that we started in the lighting, which were a little bit brighter, and we really wanted there to mm -hmm. be this kind of like deep, heavy, shadowy light. Um, so yeah. you can see here in the beginning, my, my my hand there that's coming in is really evenly lit. Yes. Um, and that, you know, might be something that you can increase the shadows in Photoshop, but we really wanted to do that ahead of time in the photography. And so we have tonal, we're testing out. we have tonal issues too, because I am so <laughs> glowing <laughs> pale. Very skin tones. So just getting something that works for both of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we were testing out the lighting too, which is fun to go back in here Startling. and just see these ridiculous images of <laughs> tiny fingers moving yeah. around and getting our lighting correct. Yeah. So we do a lot of tests, right, with our actual shoot before we even get in. But mm -hmm. that is not to say that we don't do a lot of final cleanups. So I think we could even jump over to the Photoshop and yeah. to Melissa's computer. All right, mm -hmm. so I have the um, final image open here, which I'm actually going to clear out all of yeah. these layers and start at the beginning for you guys. So. Um, starting off, we knew that we wanted to comp in um, two different hands because they're really subtle little movements between Nicole's hand and mine that we wanted to capture. Um, so you can see here, this is the base layer. So normally what we would do is um, do that quick editing and bridge and then mm -hmm. open up the, the base layer and then copy in any other comp layers that we want to be working with. So here I have that second layer, which has Nicole's hand that we wanted to comp in. We liked the, the way the light hit her fingers below. So it's a really subtle thing. Um, but it was something that we wanted to include. Yeah. So you can see here, it's just a really quick mask. I think that, we also just really wanted to line up just ever yeah. so perfectly. We do have a, a good question in, oh, our voice are too soothing. We gotta amp it <laughs> up. Okay. Um, Sorry, it's that <laughs> But Michelle asked a question. She wanted to know if we use most of the props in photography rather than using Photoshop to edit in later. Um, when we first were on screen, I think you saw like a really like crazy collage image and that is something we actually do where we'll, we still are shooting all of the pieces that we would use in a composite collage, um, but that would be like a Photoshop application. But for props, yeah. Um, in a photo, we really try to have everything that we want to have there because we love getting those true shadows and reflections. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes if something's one color, it's gonna, with our lighting, it'll like bounce around the set a little bit. So as much real as we can get. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Someone chiming in in Spanish. Hola, diseño. <laughs> Uh, all right, so here we have this um, comp layer, which I said we just went into the mask and like really did a quick mask. Since we're shooting on the exact same background, it doesn't have to be perfect. We really just wanted to kind of bring this in and we're gonna be comping out that um, little fire starter stick in the center, which yes. if you're not sure what this is, I know that this has been in all the photos. This is just a wooden dowel that we were going to use as the base for our flame, which we're gonna be putting in right here. Um, so just so that it blended a little bit better into the background and we didn't have to do too much crazy comping, um, we painted this part of the stick black because we knew that that's, you know, this is kind of where our crop is gonna be. So we're not gonna see anything outside of the bottom of that stick and all of this propping and rigging here that we did for these little pieces of um, foliage that are coming in on the sides. And you'll see the stick come back later when we actually did set some, I don't know, paper towel on fire? Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll go back into bridge <laughs> and we'll show you how we made that flame. Um, but um, sometimes where we like to start often is just kind of really crisping up our um, all of the little details within our hand and the fabric and our skin, which in this case was something that we didn't want to leave too fuzzy. Um, so we did a quick little sharpen mask here, which um, I'm just going to kind of go through all of, we have a lot of layers, so I'm going to go through it pretty quickly. But if you have a question about yeah, anything ask. specifically. And we can slide stuff around too, or recreate mm -hmm. some of these things. So you can really see like 
how much latitude you truly have. Mm -hmm. Oh, and also stay tuned because the chat and wing countdown is coming Ooh. up in under five minutes. All right. Um, so normally how we would add a sharpen mask in is, you know, you just go to filter, sharpen. We usually do an unsharp mask, which you can see here, and you can change the amount. Um, oh, I think that's on my, um, my, not my base layer, but my mask. So I'll go back into that again. Hey, for that chat and win though, you know, you've got to be chatting. So don't <laughs> yeah. So you can see here how <laughs> that unsharp mask, um, would really affect the image. We already have that applied here, but this is how we would go about doing it. Yeah. Um, and then we're isolating that sharpen mask to just the hand. So again, this is a really quick, loose yeah. mask. You can see that we Super like loose. unedited or unselected a part of the, um, stick here, which you're going to see Or there might even come later. Yeah. We didn't want to. Mm -hmm. add something that we would be taking out. So that's but, really yeah, just kind of... It also helps us create like the foreground background, mm -hmm. right? Like just bringing things to life. You can mm -hmm. see how that sharpens up um, my skin texture as well as the jewelry here and um, just some of the shine. So that's sort of what we were going for. And then as you can see here, we noticed later on that my ring was sort of weirdly on my finger and looks sort of strange. So that's the first thing that we get into in terms of the comping. Yeah. So Also just just truly whenever you get too close into hands or things like yeah, that, you're gonna you see to all these, yeah. A lot of crazy things. So with this, oh yeah, I also did a little glamor yeah. on my finger there. <laughs> yes. Um, so to start <laughs> off, <laughs> what we ended up doing <laughs> is um, just rotating this area of the hand. So. I just selected it like this, and then I'm going to show you how I ended up doing. Oh, Rotating we have a, it. We have a, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. We do have a good question here. Oh, and thank you so much, Marisa. And, mm -hmm. oh, okay, wonderful. We have a question. Um, how do we agree on styling and the color? Yeah. I think that is a really good question. Um, working so closely together, passing files back and forth, I think a lot of that happens in the brainstorming. Um, mm -hmm. And then we sort of delegate. We have a lot of trust between, you know, ourselves and, if one person has an idea, like we're gonna buy the other, but we sort of know that there's so many things to get done mm -hmm. in an image that we're gonna just like let some of those go and just, you know, usually be aligned, but sometimes we'll just be like, okay, that's the part that's making you really excited about the project, just go with that. Yeah, and often we do yeah. share references, so a lot of times we'll pull images yeah. from Instagram or from Pinterest or from wherever we see things snapping yep. in photos and um, put those all in a folder and just kind of get a sense of one another of what we're leaning towards. I think most of the time, because we have been working together for so long, uh, we do tend to align and we kind of have a, a generally unified sense of like, oh yeah, that's the right vibe for this. It needs to be like a darker image or a brighter image or have deeper colors. Yeah, and, a lot and we of can it, also anticipate yeah. each yeah. other's like tastes and preferences. But and like a lot it, of it's also based on what materials that we yeah. have. So if we know, okay, we're gonna make these sleeves and we have this fabric lying around or this, you know, these deep kind of jewel tone colors, like let's do something that yeah. matches that. I think what we came up with was jewel tone. And then mm -hmm. we sort of like rolled out our materials and found what would fit together nicely. But I think when we get to color, like in the retouching and stuff, like I'm a little color obsessed. Mm -hmm. And I tend to go into more of the yeah. specifics, like this little ring fix. This is something that I would probably kind of go into all these tiny little moments more. And I always trust Nicole for doing a color pass and bringing out tones and textures, particularly because we do have sk different skin tones, um, kind of making everything feel aligned and yeah. nice. Yeah, um, oh, someone just asked if we produce stock photography and we do not. But maybe we, we should, Adobe know. stock, we're coming for you. Oh, thanks, um, <laughs> and thanks, this Nora. was actually designed um, as a oh. digital image that we used to get new business. So yeah. um, as I mentioned in the beginning, we do a lot of personal projects and we like to you know, put in a lot of elements of um, what is, you know, exciting about our work, the handmade elements, the surreal imagery, the photography, um, and use that to promote ourselves and to get new work. So this yeah. is an image that we used for that reason. Yeah, and this did um, just look digitally. I think we mm -hmm. included it in a newsletter for yeah. ourselves. Oh, camera. Um, we have a Canon Mark D, uh, Mark III, um, 5D, yep. which we generally use and we swap out a lot of the different lenses. Um, yeah. The one that we normally use actually, which kind of provides a nice clean flat image is um, a pancake lens, which yeah. is a 40 millimeter fixed lens. Yep. Um, we also have a macro lens, which we use um, pretty often for really small scale sets, which is what we used for that Lishinary campaign, which we talked about in the beginning with yeah. the tiny jewelry. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we, we tend to stick with that, that Canon. It has served yep. us very well. It really has. 
Um, so going back right. into this little fix. So I have rotated this portion of the ring. And then I'll talk to you a little bit about um, liquify. So because <laughs> the ring kind of squeezes my finger at this strange Melissa point. Melissa loves liquify. I do love liquify. <laughs> I just wanted to, you know, make that a little bit more streamlined. I'm not super into crazy body retouching, but I do do some subtle things, do you especially want to open on up hands. Liquify, actually, yeah. to show how that works, because I think it's really kind of incredible. So I'll actually just um, kind of redo that layer. So you can do a lot in liquify. I mean, you can even there's some like presets in there where you can change people's face proportions, eyes, almost like a face actually, tune scenario. Yeah. Ooh. I'll just leave this in here. Um, all right, so opening. But I don't up. know if you've all used this tool before, but Liquify. it is super handy. I mean, clone stamp is always great, but this is like you're working with the thing that's really there and just altering mm -hmm. it. So it just goes into the layer that you have mm -hmm. open. So I just have this little piece of the finger open. So I'll show you some of the things that you can do with Liquify. Um, this is also really great. Um, when you're really trying to get like a perfect arch or a perfect circle or a really straight line, we often use it to adjust our sets because you know they are handmade and they aren't always perfect. So you can use this to kind of get a line to really be mm -hmm. nice and straight or get a curve to be really perfect. And there's always um, some lens distortion even with the fixes yeah. available. So the way this mm -hmm. works is you can just really subtly, you can make your brush bigger or smaller. And you can just oh, really are subtly. We at the hold on. Oh, we are at hold the chat on. Okay, yeah, y'all are, are chatting, chatting, chatting. It is chat and win time. <laughs> y'all are reminding us. Thank you. I can see that in the chat. Okay. All right. So you guys have. I believe we have a winner. Do we have a winner? Who gets the stickers? I need to know. Okay. We are okay. waiting to find All out right. who it is, but thanks for everybody for right. getting and really involved in the chat. It is blowing up. Wait, what what are what are they winning? They are winning a hundred <laughs> free three by three inch die cut stickers from Sticker Mule. What? And I believe there's also a deal um if you don't end up winning the chat and win. If you go to stickermule.com slash Adobe Live 19, there is a deal for 10 stickers for $1 for you guys. Yeah, that's great. So we ah, are I see up. a lot of excitement. <laughs> I see a lot of excitement. Get in there. Hi, okay. Michelle. Hi, Rajesh. Jose, Eduardo. You guys are fast. I know. <laughs> Wonderful. Who's going to get it? Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we have a winner, Woo! Cindy Sang. Sang, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Congrats, Cindy. Enjoy your stickers. <laughs> and for everybody else, be sure to check out that URL and you can get a deal on your own. Yes, yes, absolutely. Stickermule.com okay. slash Adobe Live 19. Maybe it's a good time to recap what we're doing because I can see that some people have some questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you are just joining, um, we are <laughs> describing um, how we put together a composite image for personal promotion, mm -hmm. how we can concept those images and build them in real life and finalize them in Photoshop. And um, we're just and getting into the um, mm -hmm. editing right now, um, going into the liquify tool. Yeah. Nice and also, I do know that some of you all had some questions about um, career building. Uh, so please feel free to, to keep on um, checking in with us about that as well. Uh -huh. Um, so right now I have um, the liquify filter open, which you get to under filter liquify. So I'm already in there right now. And I'm just going into how you can use that to sort of subtly move things around in your image um, and really make small adjustments. As I was saying before, you can use this, um, in our case, we use it for handmade props and sets if you wanna really get a perfect line or you want to adjust something. So right here, what I would have normally done is you can kind of just bring in any areas that are like a little bit puffed out, just mm -hmm. do a slight little nudge there, which is really helpful. And there are a lot of other tools in here that you can use. Like for example, there's like this bloat tool, which you can use to make things to a little bit puckered out, yeah. but we don't want that for this part. Um, or, 
you know, also this squeeze tool, which you can use to do the inverse. Um, so that's kind of what we use pretty often, yeah. um, just to make sure our sets are really nicely aligned. And then in this case, to just fix any little areas that are kind of coming forward in a strange way. So I'm going to cancel out of that. Mm -hmm. So you can see the result of how we sort of moved in those sides here to make so, the finger nice and straight for this image. Yeah. Yeah. And awesome. then um, going into a few more of the touch ups. So we have that little ring layer put in. And then the next thing that we normally do, or that we would do in this case, is just clean up any little marks or stray edges um, mm -hmm. or specks of dust that might have gotten into the set. Yeah. Um, so often what you can see here, like there's just some small little specks that we're cleaning up. Yeah. There are a lot of different ways you can do this. Sure. Um, I think you generally like to use um, clone stamp to fix things. Healing tool, yep. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of, yep. I also really love using um, the patch tool, which it's kind of just like a bigger version of the spot healing tool. You can kind of grab large sections of the image and drag them into a different area. And I think that that's what the creative challenge is for tomorrow. So um, Ooh, you guys are going to be, well, we'll be talking and about we'll, that and yeah. you guys will be doing a challenge with I that. can't wait to see what you all come up with. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of up to you how far you want to take. We wanted something, you know, sometimes when you retouch so far, things no longer look real. Mm -hmm. So we leave some like little, t like tells, I guess you'd say. But um, we definitely want our images looking clean. And as you know, everything is being built in the studio, we're definitely going to remove any like, we use a lot of fishing wire, trans, mm -hmm. you know, transparent threads and things like that to hang things. And of course, this like big pole mm -hmm. in there has to go. So the flame looks perfectly magical yeah. above our nails. So I'm actually going to just clean up one little area that it looks like we missed using the clone stamp. So there's like, nice. you can see right here, these are fake nails <laughs> that we have added on. Yes. And so there is a little piece of probably wax or glue or something that we don't want to show. So in using the clone stamp, oh. I'm just selecting this little area right next to that and just kind of cleaning that up. It's a really small thing. I'm sure no one would really notice it, but you know, we like to kind of just go into things and really be as thorough as possible. So just using that clone so stamp there. We are getting a lot of questions about what it was like to start a business just with us too. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, wow. These are you know, some good comments, too. It's true. It is like jumping, nor it is like jumping in the ocean where you can learn to swim first. But, uh, <laughs> I think that's kind of what it was. Yeah. It was just jumping in and figuring it out as we went. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, we had, a, I think we described earlier in our intro that we worked together for several years ago, very side by side, kind of like in the trenches. Mm -hmm. um, so we knew that we knew how to work together. Um, and then in our time spent apart, we realized that we were traveling down sort of parallel paths or similar paths in the work that we were pursuing, um, clients we were pursuing and work that we were getting. So it felt very natural for us to come together and align, but the actual running a business is a whole other beast, you know? Um, and just with us too, we really do do most of the work ourselves. I think we said earlier, sometimes we'll work with outside photographers, um, but just to be really transparent, sometimes that's really like budget contingent. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we do a lot of editorial work and those budgets tend to be lower and we definitely shoot all of those things ourselves. Um, a larger brand campaign, sometimes we'll bring in um, an outside photographer. And we love collaborating with other people. Um, but again, that's by a project by project basis. So mm -hmm. if we need like a bigger set belt, or we had a friend of ours for the other land um, campaign that we shared earlier, help us out by cutting some plexiglass for us, um, things like that. But yeah, just really navigating. We do all of the project management. We do all of our correspondences. Um, we do our um, quotes and estimates together. And yeah, we really are very lean. <laughs> mm -hmm. I also see um, people yeah. asking uh, where this visual was used. Um, so we use this um, to send out our um, newsletter. Um, so this was sort of the main image that we had to sort of cap off all of the work that we were also showing just to have something new for people to see um, that was a little bit more specific to us. We also used it all across um, social, pretty much every other platform that we could sort of pull this out at and, and target it towards clients. Um, we also just recently got a good tip that we weren't doing as much before, but um, posting yeah. onto LinkedIn. Yeah. This would be a great um, image to use to sort of start off a post there. Yeah. Um, just letting people know what we're up to and what we've been working on. Yeah. And, remind people about and those are all the ways, right? Like how, oh, I actually, 
where you can um, find new clients or new mm -hmm. people that you'd like to work with. Yeah. So, um, all right. So I've just gone through, um, you know, most of these tiny little tweaks. As you can see, a lot of these were done, but just cleaning up some dust. Um, I cleaned up that little wax area using the clone stamp tool. Um, you could use the spot healing tool brush for that as well. Um, we did use that sharpen mask before on the skin, so we have this kind of like really harsh texture, which kind of is working in our favor, I think, for this image. Um, a lot of times, you know, in skin texture, you, do, you don't want to see the lines, you want it to be a little bit softer, so that's a good place to use the patch tool and kind of fade out some of the skin wrinkles to have like a really nice smooth base. Mm -hmm. But in this case, you know, we're keeping it here with the sharpen mask. Yep. Um, so then the next big thing that we're going to be removing is this large pole here. So we want that to disappear and make it seem like this flame is coming out directly from our fingers. Um, so the way that we ended up doing that was we pulled in an image that we had taken just of the background. Oh, yeah. Let's actually... Mm -hmm. Do we have the one with the smoke up there? Oh, we don't yet. No, we're okay. going to get to adding oh, a little bit of okay. smoke. But for just removing the pull, um, you could do this all just with um, comping and clone stamping out that area. Mm -hmm. But um, in this case, we just took a photo of the background, which is usually best because you're going to get the same exact lighting, the same texture, so it really makes it easy. Um, so we have that image, and then we just did a mask to get rid of um, the area with the pull, really kind of trying to avoid our fingers. And this is just something that we are painting in usually with a Wacom tool and just getting in there and kind of um, really just painting the areas that we don't want to show. Yep. So you can see that we masked out that area and it blends really nicely. And then there's just this one little area up by the fingernails that, um, you know, the I think the image was a little bit shifted. So that little piece of um, foliage is kind of coming in there. So we want to fix that. Yeah. Um, so we just scooted that image over to an area that was clear and did the exact same thing. Just did a little quick mask. Um, to cover that area up and make it nice and clean. So just with that, now we have that wooden pole removed mm -hmm. and um, there is no trace of our fire starter, which we are gonna be um, adding in here in a little bit. Oh, what up, Jing? Thanks for joining us. Hi, Jing. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so do we wanna bring in, we have, so we have different plates that we brought in. So we already have composited two, two different hands. hands. Um, now we want to bring in some flame, and we also want to bring in some smoke. Yeah, so, so we, this is the fun, um, yeah. surreal part of the image where we shot these pieces ahead of time. So mm -hmm. you can actually see our process yeah. in shooting it, um, going into bridge. If we I can go, go straight over. to the, um, oh, I've got the smoke up now, mm -hmm. but let's actually come on over here to the flame. So, so you shooting can see flame is difficult. That is not a marshmallow. <laughs> 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 we tried this a few different ways. It was really trial and error. We had never shot flame on a dark background before, but we just wanted to have something with a high contrast that we could comp into this image. Um, so we tried it a few different ways, but we did start this little fire in our studio using that fire stick and a little paper towel. We had plenty of water around. Um, and just try to get that flame in a bunch of different ways so that you could really see it on the dark background. So you can see, I just brought in the settings that I had for this. So we really did because it was, it was a very, very, very dark image. Mm -hmm. So. And it is generally easier to shoot um, a flame on a dark background if you ever do want to do this effect and then just use the lighten filter in Photoshop to add it into your image because that's going to get rid of all of the dark parts of the image. Yeah. It's much more challenging on a white background, which is the case for um, when we showed you that Washington Post editorial earlier. Uh, those flames were on a light background, which is much harder to capture. Um, so you have to do a lot more layering of those effects and kind of almost painting in some of those red areas Absolutely. to get a nice contrast. But, but we were fortunate to get this. I mean, it took quite a bit mm -hmm. to even just get this level of flame. You can see like in real life, this was a huge flame, but this was as much as we could capture, but it worked out so well. You know, some of these things are like lucky accidents and you don't know what you're gonna get. Mm -hmm. um, but just to have the two things coming together was actually really perfect for us. But you can see I had to pump up the exposure quite a bit and bring down the contrast, bring down the highlights, um, bring up the shadows, bring down the blacks, and I definitely brought a lot of vibrance in there because mm -hmm. we really wanted this thing to glow. And then just to, I know that you see me in here starting this fire. So um, in terms of us working together, um, we usually bounce back and forth pretty often in terms of who's doing what within the photo shoot. Yep. Um, so we usually set up our camera 
and are set to be tethered. So we'll have a remote control at times or one of us will be manning the camera and the other one is um, styling the imagery um, or making small adjustments. Nicole is notorious for moving things an inch or two yes. and taking a bunch of photos until we get just the right thing. Yeah, I can see that, you know, that goes back to the question that we had earlier. Do we Photoshop things in later? And honestly, some of the things we could, like some of that little minutia moments. Yeah. <laughs> but I love to see everything just captured just mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I was on fire <laughs> duty. I think Nicole was on, um, you know, water yeah. beauty. <laughs> I was definitely on safety probably. And we you? had a remote where we were just yeah. shooting it in the so. moment so we wouldn't miss a thing. Yes, I think I was just standing off to the side with like a bottle of water. Yes. Yeah, we do have a... Um, Teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a fire <laughs> safety thing on our, our roof so we have to be very careful with smoke that yeah. we don't make anything catch on fire but, in our studio. But honestly, um, we did want a lot of smoke, right? Because yeah. that just added to the atmosphere. So we did go ahead there as well. And um, shoot see. a plate for that. We shot a plate for smoke, and there you can see that was really charred. Again, I save my um, color settings, and you can see really brought it out. Feels very painterly, which is something I I felt felt right for this. Mm -hmm. um, we definitely brought some blue in. I think you can see, and that even happens more later in the final layered Photoshop file. So like you really like the tonal, we have like some red and blue, right? So the smoke is like in the bluer zone. The um, twigs are redder in this photo. And so it's just really just f finessing all that stuff mm -hmm. in the last bit. But this is what we use to bring some smoke in. Yeah, so we weren't actually, I think, 100% sure what would work or what we'd wanna do. But I think when we go into these projects, we always have a sense of like, these are the pieces that we wanna capture first. And we know how we're gonna comp those in with Photoshop. So, you know, we might wanna use smoke. We might need a lot of versions of smoke. We might need a bigger flame, a smaller flame, a flame with nothing in the background, smoke with a little bit of texture behind it. Um, so we try to just capture as many pieces as possible ahead of time so that we have a lot of tools to work with in Photoshop once we're creating our final image. Yeah, all right, so let's go back to that final image on Melissa's screen. Yeah. So here we have that little fire starter stick comped out, which now you know what the purpose of that was the whole time. And we have our image nice and clean, save for all the pieces around the edges that we know we're gonna comp out so that we get kind of a nice tight final shot. Um, so here, we're gonna start comping in some of the flames that Nicole just showed you. So you can see the one that we showed you initially was kind of perfect. It has this nice little arc at the bottom um, that really fit over our two fingers and kind of gave it that nice magical illusion. So this is a really subtle thing, but we just um, added in that image on its own, normal. And it's actually um, also a crazy mask, which there's a little piece of foliage here that I um, uh, brushed out. Um, so I'll just take that mask away so that you can see um, the full image. So this is that, that comped in flame that we showed you before. So we just threw that image into this file, masked out the flame. And then, as I said before, having a really dark background is really useful because it just blends seamlessly into whatever you're working on and leaves the lighter portions to show. Um, so using that light and filter, um, that flame just kind of stands on its own and all the pieces that we comped out, that little piece of, um, of foliage that's coming in and the paper towel are uh, masked away. So they're really just leaving the flame here. And then this is a really subtle thing, but I think this all kind of comes into just getting that bright color. We just duplicated that layer, um, just so we would get a little bit more vibrancy and light within that flame um, and really make it pop. So it is as simple as that. Now we have flame. Um, but I feel like it's not really enough and we wanted to add some smoke also. So luckily we had all of yeah. those um, pieces of the there smoke to work with. So again, so you can see how ridiculous that looks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So again, here we are just putting in um, that initial file, which I'm gonna do normal so that you can see what it looked like. And we've rotated it so that we can get exactly the the right angle of the smoke kind of going up. So you can see this is like the full oh. ooh, the full image. Like um, a little shout outs to oh hi Sean, thanks for joining us. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we have that smoke in here. We've just rotated it, really brought out um, the contrast here, which you can see is kind of crazy in my um, skin tone, but it's working really well for the smoke. 
we have pretty high contrast. Yeah. And again, we have just masked out that area, again, with just a really quick, clean mask. Yeah. Sometimes you have to go in and be really precise and use the pen tool and do a really beautiful mask, and sometimes you can just paint it in. That's right. So in this case, we have just painted it in with the brush tool and added that part in. And then again, we're going to use the Lighten um, filter in Photoshop to get rid of all that dark background. And again, the mask is just helping us um, get rid of my hand and that extra little fire starter stick that was coming in here. So yeah. we just have like a nice overlap of the flame and the smoke. Um, and all of these extra pieces have been um, taken off. And then just to kind of give it a little bit more contrast, we've added like a really slight curves layer, yeah. which is almost negligible at this point, but just to really amp up those like white pieces of the smoke. Yeah. Um, and for sure. Add that contrast. So this is looking pretty much close to final. We have the flame, we have the smoke. Yeah. And we, we do have, have all some, the surreal elements. We do have some questions here. Um, <laughs> okay, some people are asking about getting work as, um, hi, Mina. Um, work for a magazine as a retoucher. That oh. is, yeah, I mean, I do think that is like a really, Mastering yeah. Photoshop, I think, <laughs> <laughs> get you close. This is something, our retouching is so tied to our work that we do ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a very nice note from Denise. Seems like we have a dream job. <laughs> but we do want fun. you to ask, her. it is very fun. But we want you to ask those, those real questions too, because, you know, I mean, appreciate the comment. But um, running a studio is really, really challenging. Okay, thanks for seeing, things are looking nice. Yeah, I think it's fun to look at these, this photo also um, next to some of our other collaborations. And I think this is also something we really do love to talk about and we've gotten some questions about. So like working together and navigating, um, what are we gonna create? What are we gonna work on? Where are we going to share it? What are mm -hmm. we going to do? So we've done some projects um, that speak more closely. And I think in the very beginning, just to recap, we talked a little bit about how we started working together um, as in-house brand designers, um, and then blew off some steam working on like fun, cathartic projects. I mean, we have arrived here working pretty primarily in photo-based design work um, with hand-built sets, but we've had like a couple twists and turns along the way, mm -hmm. like thinking back to um, some of those more just for fun projects where we like were sharing stuff on Instagram just to see like, could this be fun? This is a thing and hashtagging it ugly sculpture, hot designs. <laughs> Those are when we would just like really just wild style, put together something, create something, yeah. uh, set it really quickly and shoot it, and then moving into creating pinatas. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so a lot of those are kind of just exercises where we started off saying, we wanna have a creative outlet and yeah. we want something that sort of shows the fun side of our work or some of the things that we like to do but people aren't necessarily paying us to do just yet. Yeah. Um, so we started that hashtag and that project as a way of forcing ourselves to make a creative project yeah. in a day and share it no matter what it looked like. Sometimes we didn't like it, sometimes we did. But it sort of took away the butterflies of, of yeah. putting something out there that you're afraid people are gonna see. But when you're constantly doing it and you're seeing the evolution of it, um, people you know, just get used to seeing your work and I think get to see a lighter side of what you're doing, sure. which um, you might feel really precious about or feel like, oh, it's not perfect yet. But it is really freeing to just sort of put things out there. So I think that's where that, that drive initially started. Um, but it did lead us to, you know, really wanting to incorporate personal work um, as mm -hmm. a way of reaching out to people. And also, it's a kind of a nice vehicle for developing your voice. Um, but we do have an all caps question. Mm -hmm. So what are some challenges having and maintaining a studio? Pros and cons. What is some misconception? Okay. Oh. Huh. So well. let's start with pros. So is always nice to have that. Or we can even start with challenges. <laughs> so challenges, um, uh, what would that be? I mean, I, mean, I, I think... feel like a lot of it is in terms of the, the balance of time yeah. that wasn't anticipated. Um, like making all of this stuff is super fun and is probably the best part of us working together is that we get to have these creative concepts yeah. and sit down and make these things. But really sometimes that is like, 
one day out of 20 days of answering emails and reaching out to people and making decks and talking mm -hmm. more about concepts with clients, which we're going to get into tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We'll show you um, a client deck for a And how lengthy um, that process project. actually can be. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I definitely didn't anticipate that as much before. I think, you know, when you have a steady job and you're working um, in-house or you're working for a company, um, a lot of the, that administrative stuff is already dealt with for you or there's someone else on your team working on it. Um, so with us, it's it's really just the two of us unless we're hiring some freelance work for, um, you know, a, a photographer or someone to come in and help for the day. But for the most part, we are doing everything. We are sitting across from each other every day and talking about every email and every photo and every creative decision. Um, I and mean, it's a lot. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, so um, I would say pros. Pros are, even for all that time that you're spending, you're really um, like the captain of your own ship. It's a mm -hmm. really it's a really wonderful feeling. So you can say yes or no to projects. You can pursue, pursue paths that seem interesting to you. There's, I think between the two of us, we have a lot of shared interests, but we also have a lot of independent interests and we can really try to see how we can grow and pivot and build our studio to like really uh, encompass all of those. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a real pro. And um, I think wine at three is a pro. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Just a little <laughs> glass of wine at 3 p.m. is nice. You um, can do that when you have your own studio. Um, oh, I see another then, question, And actually. the cons, I think, are, you know, it's stressful. It is stressful. It is, yeah. yeah. I see another question about 3D digital software, <laughs> which is a question that we get all the time. A lot of people think that our work is CGI or made um, yeah. in 3D modeling. And again, the project tomorrow is another one where we got a lot of comments on it saying, oh, I thought this entire thing was made on, um, in a 3D modeling program. So we actually have never really used that. We don't no. do 3D modeling at all. Everything that we create is real and amplified or edited or sort of um, made surreal digitally through Photoshop yeah. um, or through the like tweaks that we add in, such as this, where we're adding in these Compton layers and kind of creating something a little bit magical. But um, we do not do any 3D modeling. I think we're open to I'm open to it. Open I would love to, to learn. It. Yeah, super, super <laughs> interested. Just um, I think it would, it would free us up with some concepts that seem really challenging to build. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, just have it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go into the um, last layer of this um, image, mm -hmm. which is Nicole's specialty, the color tweaks. Um, so we often leave this at the very end. And I guess just generally in terms of photo editing, um, I feel like I usually like to sort of do things in um, stages of like editing the whole base image, which we showed you here, where we're doing all of the cleanup in terms of the skin and the little specks and dust flicks flex that we want to be cleaning up, um, cleaning up the background. And we tend to leave um, all of those finishing touches and um, color tweaks and curves tweaks to the very end. Yeah. Um, so just to kind of recap what we've already done with this file, um, we brought in. Oh, I have color tweaks up on mine too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so we brought in the base layer, which was my finger here. And we wanted to change out Nicole's hand. So we added that layer in and just did a quick mask so that we could kind of have a half and half of two different images. Um, we added a sharpen mask over the hands, which is really, you know, you can only really see it when you get close up. So that has brought out some of the skin texture as well as the jewelry and some of those pops there. Um, we have fixed this little weird part of my ring that has shifted. Um, we just rotated that image and then used a liquify tool to bring in a little bit of my hand, um, a little glamour on my finger. And uh, we have also just cleaned up a few little specks on my um, thumbnail there, as well as on Nicole's nail, um, where you can see hints of glue or wax from some of our propping. Oh, we have some good questions mm -hmm. here too. Sorry, I'm just gonna jump in with that. Yeah. If, of yeah. So, question: How do you deal um, if one of or of you or both of you are ill and cannot work? Also, how do you deal with time and who earns what if one spends more time on a project than the other? Oh. So well, that second one is pretty. Uh, we've had a lot of discussions about it, but um, I feel like usually when one, I, I think we sort of trade off on you know when one person can be a, 
be available and when the other person can be available. So yes, we tend to not get sick at the same time. <laughs> yes, we really plan it out. Um, if it, it has not happened, but we definitely knock on wood. yeah, knock on wood seriously. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's been really lovely. We've really been able to count on each other. Um, so it really hasn't interrupted our workflow when one gets mm -hmm. sick. Um, I mean, worst comes for, to worst, we would just let the client know that we, you know, need extra time yeah. if there, if time allows and it's not a super crazy project or if yeah. it's a really quick deadline. I mean, I have done photo shoots with a fever before and yeah. it's not ideal, but not sometimes ideal. you just have to do what you have to do. It's true. Um, what was but, the second part of the question? Yeah, the, uh, the money. And, yeah. I, and, I, and I think that's really good because so much about running a studio is also about money. Um, what we get hired to do as Party of One, that money goes to Party of One, and mm -hmm. we split that money. Mm -hmm. And it really doesn't matter who does what. And we have a very, you know, as I've said, a very collaborative process, um, but definitely if we have more than one project going on in, at the same time, one person will focus on one project and the other will focus on the other. So we'll be working side by side, and it doesn't really matter which project pays what. Like, we're, we are still, we are a unit. Yeah, and so. if one person is taking the lead on a project, chances are the other person is answering the majority of the emails or doing the invoicing or kind of picking up the slack in a different realm. So it's it's hard to really split that up and start to quantify like this is worth this amount or this is worth that amount when everything is going towards the business. And I think that that really helps to like build trust between the two of us and just make it so that there's not so much pressure if if one person's working on something that just happens to be paying more yeah. um, than the other project, everything is going towards the studio and all of that, you know, For profit sure. is shared. And we and we have things that we like to do, right? Mm -hmm. Like even within our project. So we're, we really like everything just sort of falls along pretty natural lines. Mm -hmm. Yes, Chris, um, Kirsty, yes. Um, we, just to recap, we use a lot of masks for the work. This is actually an image that's made up of four different images. So mm -hmm. we are masking out parts to bring other things in. Yeah, so just going back into this mm -hmm. recap. So we had just cleaned up that whole image and um, we added in this flame, which talking about masks is actually just one image that um, we shot as a plate that we masked out and um, added in with a light and filter and then duplicated that to add a little bit more color and vibrancy. And then our final comp layer, which is the smoke, which was another plate, which Nicole, sh Nicole showed or earlier, um, which is also just added in um, and masked out so that you don't get any of that background in there. You can see our really kind of loose masks here. Um, and then bringing in um, a curves layer to add a little bit more intensity and some contrast there. Um, right. So the can, final thing yeah, is color tweaks. Colors. Yeah, so, so you can just flick that folder <laughs> on and off, right? Yeah, so and, you can see. Um, I mean, just, okay, so this is also a studio thing because we're friends now and we can talk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I think I drive Melissa a little crazy with like very tiny tweaks, like in, <laughs> in color. Um, but I think altogether, it's just such a fun way to really like alter slightly the mm -hmm. mood and tone. So you can see with that folder off um, that... My, yeah. my skin tone and my arm, you know, are in shadow. And because I do have a darker skin tone, it is a, like a bit lighter. So we do want to bring out the right side of the photo yeah. um, with that. So you can see in the final that my hand and the my crazy little cuff my purple cuff has been brought out. Yeah. Um, and also there's more of a kind of warm vignette yep. along the background For and sure. a warming of the um, smoke and brightening of that area. So we'll go through all the different steps we yeah. used to get to, awesome. to that. Um, so yeah, starting off, I feel like usually our color tweaks are many, many layers and it's all kind of tiny little things which ultimately do make a big difference at the end. But if you were to go through each individual layer, which I'm gonna do now, you might be like, what? I don't even see. Uh, <laughs> what's happening. Um, but this is also part of the trust, you know, yeah. like where it's like, oh, okay, whatever you're doing there. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, Because you know, so ultimately, <laughs> accumulatively, like adds up to something really nice, I think, in all the way. Yeah. I also see we have the um, countdown to the portfolio what? review in less than 30 minutes and 26 minutes, so be sure you're submitting your um, portfolios. We're really excited to take a look at your work. Great suggestion, Tina. That's true. <laughs> what? Oh. oh. Someone was Nail suggesting that we yes. could have, like, yes. We, we do consider all yes. of those color color yes. matching things. Um, that was a good thought. We yeah. didn't do we didn't oh. do the purple nails. 
Oh, yeah, but it does match my ring, so there's kind of a little it's golden a purple pop. It's fabric voluntary. Yes, we did choose it. We wanted we something really, it yeah, it's real, <laughs> y'all, it's real. So, <laughs> Nicole has a background in making, um, oh. you know, she's very good at, at creating fashion wear, <laughs> fashion in general, sewing things that I do not have the skills for, so she um, was able to make that, um, that cuff and kind of rouge that fabric and make something that we could put together. But as you can yeah. see, I mean, it is we taped to my something arm. Great. And Just also <laughs> in the full frame, I think when you see it, yeah, we, we really like color. We wanted something that didn't feel too extremely dark and we definitely want to stick in the jewel tone. So mm -hmm. we did make choices and those are so subjective, right? Like some people are gonna like it, some people aren't. Purple is a challenging color, I hear you. <laughs> and I think with a lot of it too, um, you know, we make things for the photograph. so. Bear in mind that a lot of things don't have to like live on forever, and we try to be efficient in that and just do things that are gonna look nice and tight for the photo, but aren't necessarily finished in the way that you would finish something walking down the runway or you know finish something that needs to live on as a permanent set. And that's something that we're always balancing because we do often work in um, larger skill sets. Um, we're working on a project now that is a human size set that's gonna have to live on you know, hopefully for many, many years. So that type of finishing is obviously very different. Um, it needs to look good at every angle. It needs to be, you know, really nicely finished so that someone, if they're walking up to it, is um, not gonna be like, what is that weird little thing? But for this case, we just need the photo. We need it to be cropped in. Um, so, you know, we are leaving a lot of the finishing quick and easy. You yeah. can see the tape. You can see that this sleeve is just sort of tied in. We use some, um, some string here to some, like make the channels. Yeah, yeah. So it is, it's efficient, it's quick, but it's getting the message across. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, we're just balancing that because we have to use our time on a lot of other different things in having the studio. Yeah, for so, sure. Going back into these color edits, I have not actually changed anything. So this is exactly what was done for our final photo. Um, and you'll see how slight some of these things are. And it really is just a sort of subjective preference of um, you know, bringing out certain things. So you can see with this layer, it's a really, really slight um, hue shift on um, my nail and on the sleeves. And you can just see in this mask, again, a very loose mask. We aren't being too precious with it. Um, we're just um, masking this uh, blue channeled sleeve as well as the purple one to bring out some of the vibrancy. And you can see it's really, really subtle, but it does just bring out some of those warmer purple tones over here. And um, it kind of, makes this blue really pop on this left side. Um, so that was the first layer, which was a hue saturation layer, and we're just kind of bringing up the saturation a little bit to yep. 15. Um, and then the next thing, which you actually do Obviously. a lot, and I didn't know about this thing until you showed it to me, but um, photo filters in Photoshop. Um, I never really thought to use it, but Nicole uses it very often, and it can, kind of provides like a really nice little glow, which you could make in other ways, but this is sort of these little preset things that are fun to play with. Yeah. Um, so there is a nice warming filter here, which you can access this um, down here in the layers. I mean, there's, you know, it's right here, it's a little filter. extra maybe steps in here, but I think they all add up. And there's so many, I mean, Photoshop is sort of a bust, right? So there's so many different ways to get to the same spot. I like, I think I tend to get a little granular, right? And I want, sometimes I want that overall color and then sometimes I want things to be very localized. <laughs> yeah. So this is just adding like a, a nice sort of warm, almost sepia glow to everything. Again, really, really subtle. But I think this also sort of adds to that mood where we want it to feel like it's, you know, outside maybe under like a nice warm fire. So you want that warmth in the image. Um, so that warming filter really helps to bring it in. Um, and then we have a isolated right. curves layer, which is really helping to bring out the smoke as well as my hand, which we already brought out a little bit um, in the hue saturation layer, but we're just really kind of getting my hand to pop there. Yep. Again, a very loose filter. This is not a great example of super tight filters, but um, it I, does the job. Yeah, and Tim, um, in chat, you're right. Um, often we will do, uh, I love using Camera Raw to really do a lot of these color tweaks in the f in before we even bring it into Photoshop. But when working collaboratively, sometimes that's a little bit challenging um, because you can't really go back. 
You yeah, know, whatever so, you're bringing into Photoshop is going to be your base image. So, so Camera Raw does sort of bake in a lot of the yeah. initial edits, but um, it does have a lot more. Um, I, I particularly love using it for um, the lens correction options that are there and just getting like a really nicely centered, straightened up image, um, mm -hmm. getting out any weird perspective things that you just mm -hmm. don't really want to use and kind of applying that to. Um, a full suite of photos if you're comping in a lot of different images like we are. Yeah. Um, so for example, if this was something that had more um, specific lines or really um, kind of a strong grid that we had to stick to, um, doing some of those lens correction tweaks and shifts in camera raw and then applying that exact same thing to all of the images um, just makes it a little bit easier and make sure that we're importing um, exactly the right change into every single um, layer so it's all exactly the same. Um, all right, so then continuing with these color edits. So the next thing that we added in here was just one more little pop of that purple sleeve. Again, super subtle. Yep. And this is, what is this layer? I don't know, my computer's a little frozen. Oh, okay. Um, but you can see another kind of lightened mass. This is actually slightly gray, so you know you could change the opacity um, or you can make it a little bit. That's the sleeve. So that, again, these are like the very subtle mm -hmm. things. This is when we're just like really sweetening, yeah. right? Oh, so, so this is, yeah, this is just a little curves tweak. Yep, just a little curves tweak to bring out some more dimension in the sleeve. Tiniest little thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we do actually one more sharpen. Yeah. Which along is... the edges. So this is sort of vignetted along the sides, but we're excluding the area with the smoke because we do want that to stay nice and soft. Yeah. Um, and then so this, this is something is... kind of new, the color lookup. Oh yeah, that's yeah. something that you also um, yeah, that's introduced thing. to me, which it's kind I really of like, like a, I guess you'd comparable to a LUT. Like it's mm -hmm. just really changing everything, like a full, like a, like an Instagram filter, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes um, you can. There's so many available if you go into. If you even could like just pull up all the ones that are available to you. Mm -hmm. So you find the color lookup also like the photo photo filter down here, mm -hmm. um, and you can select you the different through, ones you that you have. You can even see like how different it can make it. All like right, let me go into my um, yeah the one that we already did. So this was something that was already saved, but yeah, you can. It just really changes. Yeah, and you're the only vibe. seeing it in the corner right now, so. Oh maybe yeah. Actually that was yeah. I'll so go just into to do all over. But like if you add a fresh one. Yeah. If you don't want to, if you feel comfortable with your image and you just want to play around with like a lot of different looks for it, it's a really it's a really fun tool to play around. Yeah. So really Very can intense change. things. <laughs> yeah. Really Fall can change the tone, and then you can also play with like how you're applying. Mm -hmm. um, so you can, you know, do an overlay would bring it out more Yeah, or you can, you know, change the opacity. I mean, yeah. this is pretty crazy but what we have up right now. We used now. it just a little bit in the corners. Mm -hmm. And I think what it really did was um, just darken it. Yeah, and you just know? kind of bring out a little bit of um, yeah. that warmth still within. I'm going to just take off that one that I had so you can see that mm -hmm. final kind of corner. Heading into portfolio reviews. Oh, we will be in 18 minutes. Okay. Be sure to submit your portfolios, you guys. You have 18 more minutes. Um, yeah, so again, this could also just be done with curves. You could do a mask there or even do a little bit of vignetting. Um, this was just kind of the way that we chose to approach it because it does have a slight um, color shift that you can get into with those corners. Um, so that kind of completes all of the color tweaks that we did. And again, you can see this before and after. So, you know. Yeah, it's it's brought out my hand. Yep. It's kind of added this warmness, warmness. We've brought out the smoke and the fire a bit more. Yeah. So this is feeling pretty close to final. I think it's always good to just like give that a little minute. Yeah. Um, and then sometimes the with um, the cropping, since we do know that we're going to be using this in a newsletter, but primarily also on Instagram to um, promote to people or to send out to people, um, often what we do before we even um, make final crops is we'll do like a crop mask on top of our image just to sort of test out between the two of us what we want to do and allow us to sort of move it around on top of the image that we're editing. And this is just like a very um, oh, Tim had a really good um, mm -hmm. suggestion here about converting the current level layer to a smart object. You can non-destructively apply the camera raw filter in Photoshop. Oh, love I'm it. I'm going to try that. Thank you. Love it. Um, all right, 
right, so I'm gonna do, let's do like a square Thanks, crop Tiana. here maybe. So like I said, sometimes we wanna test out our, um, our mask and just have something that we can really easily sort of move around. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just select Oh yeah. Select the background. And I just made a mask here that is like a square layer that we can easily move around. Yeah, sometimes I change mine to be the color of my mm -hmm. um just distant just so I can see it. But yeah. So I'm gonna make that the color of the background so it really blends in. And of course you could just crop this and you could like look at the different things, but we often like to do it just so that we can kind of play around with what our final image is gonna be yeah. um, so that we can agree between the two of us, um, make it bigger or smaller. <laughs> it's so funny. This is something this is we like go a, back and forth on yeah. a lot. And this is like <laughs> such a weird thing about working with two people too, where you know, if you were doing this by yourself, you'd probably just crop it and call it a day, but we're always running things by <laughs> one another and you know, having to have files that we can really quickly go into and edit. Yeah. Um, so these are just like the strange little extra steps that we mm -hmm. sometimes do to, well, to like look at things one, so with one well, another. So like, this is our way of like sharing a preview with the other person, right? Like we'll have a couple of different crop options and we'll be like, you can look in that file. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> change so, it, yeah. change it if you want. So you can see, you know, we knew the parts that were gonna be cropped out of this. So we didn't worry about doing any editing on these extra areas that are obviously um, showing the behind the scenes of our set. Mm -hmm. um, so for an Instagram crop, this kind of works out nicely. So then what I would probably just do is crop from here loosely. Hmm. Okay, get some stuff in. And then um, remove that mask. Some excitement for the next, um, for Eric Sue coming up. Very sweet. Get it, Eric. It's gonna be a great afternoon. Yeah. And yeah. so, yeah, so this is the image that, or one version of the image that we sent out for our promotion. Um, and, you know, we've done this with a lot of personal projects and often it does lead to um, work that's inspired by that, yes. which is really helpful. Oh, we have we one other example. example of that. So, um, if we can wanna... switch over to Nicole's yeah. computer, we have um, one other personal project that we did um, over a long period of time um, in the summer. And it was something to really showcase our collaborative process. Oh. And since then, it has led to a few editorial projects that are based on oh, that. So just I'm to take a slight some. segue. Moves, if oh. you want to. <laughs> oh, why don't we hop back over to Melissa, oh. so I'll get this back online. Um, all right. <laughs> Here, I can get this set up really quick. Our internet is out for a second, so oh, okay. bear with us as we get this project mm -hmm. going. But you can still can, ask yeah, questions. I can talk a little bit about it. Yeah. So what we're gonna show you is um, something that we created um, also for our own promotion, but another personal project um, that came out of, you know, wanting to sort of reuse materials in our studio, but also um, showcase our collaborative process a bit more. So um, we kind of use this as an exquisite corpse. Um, we wanted to create these vessels where we would go back and forth and, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> and do illustration um, that we were kind of combining with the other person's style. Um, so we started off creating. All right, we're going to go back to you now so we can go in. Not sure. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll just keep talking well, about it from here. And we'll give you a review. We'll point. talk about it. Um, so we started off with our own individual illustrations and we were working with collage and um, decals to sort of create these um, vessels. Yes. And we started off individually um, doing one vessel each and then slowly started combining each other's um, styles and do ideas. All, yeah, do you all know what exquisite corpse is? Um, we can explain that a little bit. It's just like an old surrealist drawing game, like mm -hmm. a party game. I guess. So basically perfect. like one person completes the last person's um, sketch. Yeah. So we sort of use that concept sort of. here. Yeah. Um, where we were using the last person's idea or kind of concept or application style to inform our own design. Yeah. Um, so we made a series of, how many is that, like 10, um, 10 vessels and five rounds of collaboration starting off individually on our own and then slowly building the other's process into our vessel until we got to the center round, which is those two large bottles, um, yeah. where we were completely collaborative and um, doing, you know, passing this this thing back and forth and, and drawing on it. Yeah, and so, you know, it's also fun to incorporate um, just some drawing, right? Like we're often 
building. So trying to figure out how that might work. We're just trying to figure stuff out a little bit. And yeah, right? and sort of re um, get in tune once again with each other's style. So since we do often work, I mean, this is this is probably the biggest leap, right? The very mm -hmm. first. Yeah, round. since we do often work, um, you know with an idea in mind or with a client project in mind, we don't often have the chance just to um, tap back into our own personal styles mm -hmm. and um, make things kind of off the cuff. So sometimes we just wanna be aware of one another's individual ideas or just things that we would make outside of a client brief. So this was an opportunity for us to sort of re-explore that and reacquaint each other with our own styles. So you can yeah. see this is the very first round and so um, I, I, our vases are very different. Very Mine different. is the one on the right. Um, Nicole's is on the left, and so she was using this collage kind of just more Just keeping it loose style. super loose and trying to not get too bogged down. Mm -hmm. um, and then... And I kind of made a beer label. Focused, <laughs> which is beautiful and I love it. But it was very but planned out. it was very out. different and we were sort of not paying attention to each other's direction in the mm -hmm. beginning. And it was all kind mm -hmm. of a decal that was applied and designed ahead of time. So then we started looking at each other's work mm -hmm. and I was like, all right, maybe I'll be a little looser with my design. So mine's on the right again. <laughs> mine has some like atrocious mistakes in there, but also a very funny face. <laughs> I really let go of um, outcome. I think on this project, mm -hmm. I was just like, I'm just playing. This is not for any one real thing. So just really not worrying too much. Yeah, so not like, being precious with the result, precious. which again goes back to our ugly sculpture hot designs yeah. hashtag that we were using in the beginning where we were just say we're going to make something. We might like it. We might not like it. But yeah. this is an exercise in sort of just getting rid of that preciousness. We get really close to each other still, mm -hmm. actually. Yeah, so towards round. the middle, we're so both we really using started collage. Coming together. Yeah. I mean, you can see the difference, but it's like we've bridged the gap, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. And then this was our final yeah. collaborative where round. Where we just traded back and forth. Mm -hmm. So that was really fun. And it's fun to see because it really did lead to, first off, I think just using recycled cans became like a pretty big motif. <laughs> <laughs> for me for years, it seems. But um, we're doing our part recycling, but we wanted to just <laughs> use a lot of things around the studio that we have and, and transform it in some way. So this is an example of a personal project um, turning into something that was actually paid client work. So yeah. um, a client from The Verge, which is an online magazine, came to us and said, we love what you did for the Summer Empties project. Um, can you do something similar yeah, for they our Yeah, had an article? awesome long form um, article about this rise in weed bear. <laughs> um, and all these different experiences with it. It was really fun, it was really interesting, and they just wanted like a really, a nice eye-catching image to get people like reading this great article. So yeah, it was a really fun assignment, and we definitely, they had like the summer empties, and so we played with that. But for this, we wanted to also um, not just have this uh, canned decor, but really get into, evoke the feeling of your journey after drinking some of these products, new products. So letting them sort of become. Mm -hmm. So they're slowly altered. melting and being <laughs> fused over time. And this was a yeah. long form article. So we created these images that could to sort of fit through. into the flow yeah. of this editorial. And you can see some of our behind the scenes yeah. making so these, these props. Yeah, so these are also really real. So we worked together on the decaling. Um, and then used a mix of plaster and joint compound to really create this sludge and then a lot of painting. And these also had a ton of Photoshop work in them too. We used a lot of colored um, gels when shooting, but in this first image, just um, I think we had a question earlier about how much is Compton later. So we had decaling, but a lot of the decaling on here was um, Compton at the very last, and then I used a lot of liquify. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so going to back to that add tool. To the trippiness. Ooh, let's hop back to yours because I want to see who's asking questions in the chat. Oh. <laughs> I feel like we might have some questions. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we do have. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not able to get back into it, so. Oh, okay. All right. If he's, that might help. Oh, we might have to go back to you. <laughs> okay, let's go back to me. Yeah, so that was really, really super fun. Um, yeah, yeah, that's another example. But that example is a of... really good example, right? Um, I think also we always look in personal projects for opportunities to learn something new, 
Mm -hmm. um, and I definitely, like, I definitely think I have, like, a file cabinet going. You know, I'm like, oh, that's some, that's something. I can look back into our portfolio and I can see things that I'm like, oh, sometime I want to look for an opportunity to develop that one thing we tried there and bring it back. Yeah. So, yeah, so when we get opportunities that just clear the path for us and, like, obviously give us an opportunity, it's just great. And so this was one of them. It was really super fun. Yeah, and another combination of, you know, creating something mm -hmm. custom and incorporating that mm -hmm. into um, the concepting and, you know, what we're presenting to the client, um, but also adding in a few things that make it a little bit special and different, which is that, you know, the color gel, which brings in a new light element, yep. as well as the um, decaling, which we learned from the personal project, yeah. which is essentially just um, tissue paper that we're drawing onto. And then since it's so thin, applying it almost like a like a temporary tattoo in a way. Yep. Um, so that gives us a really seamless label that almost appears like we've just drawn it directly on the can, but it's much easier to edit and, you know, do a new one if you mess up. Um, yeah, so then in the final, I could um, go back to earlier photos and different can configurations, because I think we already showed before, we like do a few different tests and trials, grab those in Photoshop and reapply them. Um, and yeah, and alter them to add. Someone's talking about the knocking. Sorry, there's some construction. Oh, yeah. But it's a good reminder that the portfolio submission deadline is coming up in yeah. under six minutes. So we're going to be reviewing your portfolios really soon. Yes. Um, and so I might actually just get started on um, something that we're going into a little bit more tomorrow. Um, but uh, we plan to just try a little animation on this sure. final Fire Fingers Why image um, to see if we can get the flames to sort of move around and make a little gif out of that. So that's not something that we ended up doing for the final, but um, it'll be a good opportunity to use that liquify tool again and sort of make those flames dance and see what we can do with Maybe that. Maybe a little puppet warp, who yeah. knows? But it also shows like how nice it is to have things on different layers because I think that's really gonna help us here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm going to get into this a little bit now, and um, we'll probably finish this up tomorrow since we do have that portfolio review coming up in about five minutes. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually just make a copied layer of all of these tweaks oh, that we've just done. Oh, someone asked about our name. Oh, we are Party of One Studio. No, but why? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that actually also came from a personal it's project. Um, when we were making the piñatas, um, which was just one little foray into like, why don't we try this? This seems like fun. This seems like a fun kind of way of creating something why don't that I is pull up cathartic. The piñatas, so All right, maybe we we'll can... get to the animation tomorrow. Well, so we can hop back and forth. But definitely <laughs> come join us again tomorrow because we will wrap this up and sort of recap some of the things that we've talked about. But then also um, really launch into client work. Mm -hmm. and how that workflow is so different. The outcomes are gonna have the same elements. We're gonna have a composite image. It's gonna be full of color and interesting lighting. We'll do a lot of retouching, but we will focus more on all of the steps that lead to that because there's so much more communication and planning that goes into mm -hmm. it. So actually, yeah, we can answer the question of why we created this name, which is with another project that we can show over here. Um, so. Going way back. When we uh, when we were working independently, I think it's further up. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, there it is. No. Up. Oh. <laughs> right there. Right um, there. When we were working independently, we would still often collaborate all the time, and we were trying to find projects that would just help us sort of flex certain muscles that our client work um, didn't always provide the opportunity for. So one of those things was. Um, a personal piñata project, which we named Cathartic Piñatas because they were meant to be something that you would um, get and destroy on your own as a way of kind of expelling whatever emotions you were going through or anything that, you know, comes up when you're starting a business and it's hard and you're trying to figure things out. Yes. So we created a series of um, these three different piñatas, if yes. you scroll down. To, to create a party really just for yeah. one. So we were going to name this <laughs> this side business, this idea, Party of One, because it's meant to just be sort of it's your fun. own solo little look journey. This, look at this poor guy. So sad. Yeah, we took a so photo sad. of that in my, in my bed. So sad. It's just having a bad day. Yeah, there's tissues. They've been crying. It's rough. <laughs> and then we also kind of created this like double flip pinata, which yeah. I think we'll sort of animate in a second. Um, or you can play it. I can play this one. So it just had two emotions on either side. Um, so yeah, we, we started this series and we were wondering, you know, maybe we can sell these. Maybe this is the business that we've been wanting to get into the whole time. But a lot of these took sometimes three um, 
three days to make with two people. So we were like, this is not necessarily the best business, but <laughs> still open to it, y'all. Cause like the idea of coming up for a really fun concept for one, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, re it's really like a great joy. Um, and it honestly was a great way to sort of yeah. express some of our frustrations, our yeah. feelings, or just kind of be able to make something together, which I think we both get a lot of catharsis over um, the act of making. Yeah, so. and there's like some tedium in it, right? Like applying all of these different fringes. So it's like very relaxing to actually do it, but we're expressing like some real feelings at the <laughs> same time. And also I think that's part of, um, that kind of runs a current that runs through our work where we're really looking to find like a great concept, something that is like a little bit more emotionally charged or has something else going on so that there's like a twist between maybe the bright, sunny happiness, maybe there's something else there. Um, yeah, just trying to play with, yeah, with so a little bit of balance. But yeah, the idea of having a party of one, just you yourself alone um, with your pinata and getting it all out mm -hmm. <laughs> just and, stuck and this process has actually come back again into our client work so it's something that people often point this out and this is one of our oldest things that we've done together and really had no um no client backing it was just again another personal project and it's something that clients often do find and it's been um, a request or a suggestion for larger set designs or in yeah. the case of what we're working on right now it's something that was sort of specifically requested um, for a stage design for um, this talk mm -hmm. show host who wanted something kind of fun and interesting in their space um, so yeah. personal projects do always come back it's great to you know, invest your time in making the things that you think are fun and interesting and you want people to pay you for. And I think that's a big tenant within our 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 studio and the way that we work. We're often, you know, trying to find ways to in, give ourselves a little bit of time and sort of infuse personal work into our projects. Um, oh, we do here, have... we can we can like, before we head over to our... Well, I think it's time for the portfolio it submission is. deadline. So let's... We'll let's... talk a little bit more about our personal work in yeah. a second, but... We're excited to see your work. Oh, great. So we have two people that have been chosen, I'm which excited. we're going to pull oh. up your portfolios now. Okay. Um, so the first one is Justin Layton. Hi, Justin. Thank you for submitting your portfolio. Yeah, thanks so much. Oh, great. We're excited okay. to take a look. Okay, so graphic designer, illustrator, photographer, Inky Design Beautiful. Studio. Oh, Justin, are you in the chat? I'm curious if you are a solo um freelancer or illustrator, or if you have a team, since you do say Inky Design Studio. Yeah. Um, okay, it's a lot of wine and alcohol Beautiful. packaging. Awesome. This flows okay. very nicely into our yes. <laughs> our can personal projects. Although those were not official label designs, we love seeing and maybe um, a packaging. little lower brow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> ours, not yours. Not yours. All right, um, so let's dive into okay. some of these projects. Well, that's perfect. Okay, let's even check out a can. Oh, to start. This is lovely. Oh, it's such a fun. Okay, so this is great. This is another really good example of like the play, right? Like it's a very sophisticated design, but it has a really funny name. And I love that. Oh my. Yeah, it's fun to see a combination <laughs> of like something, a, a funny name, but with something really simple and straightforward. Yeah, okay. I think the joke can, yeah, it kind of sneaks up on you or the humor. Anyway, it's not a yeah, joke. Yeah, let's go into some of the. Sure. Um, can we scroll down into the project? Yeah. Okay. Oh, great. you really go into a lot of oh, the work. Oh, I love this. Okay, so I think um, this is something that we have bounced back and forward um, on in our own website. Um, how far should we dial in and really spell out the project and mm -hmm. sort of provide more of a case study? So I really do appreciate that you have really. Um, spelled, spelled out, out your, your role and who the client is and what the challenge was and talked about the design and then you've showed also wonderful so oh, you've yeah, got some of the full design here you've got a really great photo that shows all sides and then also going into production so I applaud you. I think this is really comprehensive. Yeah, I think it's always great for people to see oh, some of the behind the scenes of how you've worked yeah. with um, your clients. So it looks like you were involved in um, making sure that this could work for production, which I think a lot of people really like to see. Yeah. You have images from um, you know fun. where it's getting canned, which is great to sort of see it on a larger cute scale. little detail there. Justin, I like the little A thing <laughs> And I like how you've also um, kind of changed the format of the labeling. So you have this small, Sorry, I'm going to get into yeah, your computer. Yeah, go for it. The small um, little version of this donkey down here, which I could see really working well for smaller applications. Like, for example, if you had um, 
if this was in a bottle as well on the cap, you just have like a nice opportunity to have this small icon, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, awesome, I love seeing awesome. this. And I think there was more actually on the bottom. Did you have more multiple yeah. iterations? Oh, well, yeah, we so have like a whole um, can package, mm -hmm. box package, which is great. <laughs> I just buttons. want to go ahead and like that. I don't know which I'm signed into. You can you can like it. I'm gonna just like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go back. Let's go into another. Um, yeah, let me check in on the chat too, because I know that. Oh, other people. Any... Oh, hi, Justin. Hey, nice Justin. to see you on the chat. These are all real client works. Okay, awesome. Wonderful. And then, did you? I don't know if you already answered. Do you work um, on your own, or do you have other people and employees in your studio? I'd love to know. Let me just open up this one. Oh, lovely. Right, we so we have some really interesting printing. So even like there's some complexity in setting mm -hmm. up these files, right? Um, oh, so going actually into, well, I love that this is um, a really kind of streamlined design, which is different from the other one, which has yeah. some humor and it's a little bit grittier. So it's nice to see that you have a balance of um, mm -hmm. something a little more, bit more simple um, with just a really light, Oh, I even see the logo mark, and yep. I love this printing on the label. Yeah. Um, I see that your main image, it looks like this is um, a Photoshop comp, which you've actually done a really lovely job in putting this comp together, but this could be a nice opportunity actually to incorporate some um, real life styling and yeah, photography. For sure. Um, if that's something you're comfortable doing yourself, or if you have someone that you can collaborate with, maybe even a studio that does styling that you guys could. Um, you know, work together and they could infuse a little bit of the styled elements or yep. even bring in um, this little, I forgot what they're called, like a dust, uh, dust oh, yeah. bunny. <laughs> um, um, a, a tumbleweed. Tumbleweed. I would love to yes. see a styled you photo. You could really play with that. Yeah, incorporating an that. And it would you. also kind of help clients um, really quickly get the joke because you might see it, like for a second when I looked at it, I was like, is that a thumbprint? And then I obviously understood what it was, but sometimes seeing a full styled image where you're incorporating elements from the labeling or from the product itself it's um, a wine helps from clients Texas. get it. Did you oh, catch it's from that? Texas. I hello. am from Texas. Hello, hello, hello. I would try this wine. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna look for it. <laughs> Oh, I also love the printing on the yeah um, on the cork on the cork. Yeah, yeah that's a really nice yeah. detail. So again, you followed. Okay, so this is really wonderful because you've you have um, set up a way of presenting your work and you're following along with that. Mm -hmm. And I love that. I think that's really helpful and really great. Um, yeah. I think even going along with that, um, if you're comfortable showing your initial sketches, sketches or kind of concept phases. Um, I think it's really nice for clients to see how much work goes into branding something like this um, yeah. and often showing those behind the scenes. Since you're already going into a lot of it, almost like a full case study, yeah. um, having some of that extra okay. information is really nice. Texas wines. I am going to look for these. I've never heard, so I'm excited. I'm learning all these new things. I did the bottle shot. Oh, you did really nicely did. on the bottle shots. It's hard to photograph glass. So this is not a comp. Right, into the scene, into the scene that he created. Okay, so the bottle shots are real photos, and then they're comped into a Photoshop scene. Is that correct? That's what I'm understanding. Yeah, I'm curious to find. But you've done a really nice job comping, and your bottle shots are really okay. great. You don't have any crazy reflections. Often, I know when you photograph products yeah. and you have two lights, you can get two. You just see the lights in the, so the thing nice itself. Job. So yeah, well done. And you have merch here as well. So this is a really yeah. full-fledged um, branding project, a great which project. I think would be a great opportunity to really go even deeper in that case study and show you know some of the beginning stages if you're yeah. if you're comfortable showing those. But again, love all of the in-depth process that you're yeah. going into here. So yeah, and so this seems to be a real focus. Oh, okay, so here's some also, I'm curious to find, is this also a photo of that? Yeah, you, you are fooling even us. I love how kind of surreal this is because yeah, I did you make the whole background image uh, yeah, and shoot I'm curious that and then you comped find. in the bottles? Is that correct? Yep, I see, yep, hi. <laughs> so you made the, so the background scene existed, or did you create that as well? I'm curious. Yeah. This is really fusing the two things nicely. Yeah. It's very, I love seeing things and you don't exactly know how they're made. So I think that's like a testament to doing a nice job and putting it together however you did put it together. Yeah, for sure. Okay, good. Oh, ahead. lovely. Oh, okay, yeah, and this is okay. kind of like a lighter version. So when you're showing your range mm -hmm. um, and having that sort of gritty first example, I know you have a lot more, mm -hmm. um, something a little more um, kind of simple and um, light. And then this, I love the styling here. You've done so a nice job. This is a really lovely focus. I am curious to find if you receive wine. 
I was like the third time. Yeah, work at a winery. I mean, that's um, awesome. Again, it's you've really done cool. a nice job with your bottle photography. Oh wow! Okay, and here we this are again. This might be yeah. This might be my favorite styling wise because it, it really yeah. feels super integrated. Yeah, it really all of does. the components. It's um, good. And all of the styling, whether you have done that yourself or you've worked with someone, the styling is um, really clean. I know often working with food, it's a huge challenge in terms of um, yeah, product photography and or setting photography. out how long it, yeah. And there I are definitely. so many crazy tips and tricks for how to work with food. Yes. Um, but this feels really clean and appetizing and yeah. goes really well with um, the wine. And I love for that sure. you're you know, speaking to what that product works with, I assume. Like it would be good with cheese and grapes. And so now I've learned that yeah. just quickly through the image. Great. Mm. Fun. Really fun. Oh, okay. Oh, so interesting. So you yeah. have some illustrating. Yeah, illustrating. Okay. Oh. I like okay. how you've worked in some of these kind of historical details or details about the space that it was made within the label. Yeah. It seems like you have a lot of different versions of that, which is nice to see. Yeah. I really love that. I, I really do love the way that you're presenting your work and you're really showing the full breadth of it. That's yeah, great. everything looks really robust, which yeah. um, is nice to show because I think a lot of people just show <laughs> show the the single label or single package I design. I like the other one too, so I'll come back. <laughs> oh, this is fun. Else. Oh yeah, Rusty Hook. <laughs> That's funny. That is fun. I love how you've done that. So with all of these, you're ring, really bringing oh, out the personality. And this one, you do share some of your sketches, which is just so great to see. And that's a nice little tabletop setup. Yeah, I love how you presented that. Honestly, yeah. those sketches look really nice. I don't know if those were initial passes, but or some combination of your Photoshop mock-up with the sketch itself. But yeah. the way you presented it makes oh, it feel really yeah. fun. Does the chat have any questions? People seem to really like your work, Justin. Yeah. Thank you for sharing it Thank with you us. so much for sharing it. Oh, and then oh, this, this has a really, really clean, fun. nice palette. Mm -hmm. This is a really Great. nice makeup. Really cute. It has a lot of different versions. So yeah. It's nice to see how you've altered and translated that branding across all of the different types of wine huh. and all of the different colors. Um, yeah. Fun. Great. Oh, wait, I'm going to just <laughs> We got to keep it going. I know. I missed one. I'm all like, <laughs> ah. Oh, let's go into Always Get the Long Shot, because that's the only one that has a okay, type yeah. on the front. So this feels like, um, oh, I'm curious to find, one. yeah. And I think a lot of, this one seems to have kind of a similar. Um, it's also a Texas wine. They're all Texas wines. This is just so interesting. <laughs> so it seems like you have a lot of similar styling with some of the other photos. So I wonder if this is. Um, related to some of those initial bottles where you use that kind of really deep wood, but I like to see that kind of coordinating, especially if, you know, these are all from a similar region. It's, it's nice to see that those product details are um, consistent. This is very sweet. So you did have a challenge here where you're incorporating existing artwork um, into the into the label. So that's oh. really neat. So this is really like a celebration of all things Texan in a way, mm -hmm. right? So that's really nice, but also a challenge. Sometimes it's really hard to bridge. Um, yeah. I'm curious about with this one, um, you have the, if, can you go back up to where sure. the logo is? Because I see that there's like a little bullseye yeah. in the, I believe that's a bullseye in the that Texas. Like, yeah. Oh, okay, so here you have like mm -hmm. a really strong pattern along with, I assume what this is also artwork since that's what you mentioned before. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm curious if there's more of an association mm -hmm. between um, the imagery that you're showing and that consistent mark, which is really bold and nice. Yeah. Um, I actually do love this really simple yeah. bottle that just uses the, um, mm -hmm. the the strong colors, the red, black, and white, and that bullseye. So in some ways, um, initially, I think without reading the full story of it, seeing that um, oh, so the crosshair with the artwork is different. Yeah, it's different. It's interesting, but it also really, they want to um, pay tribute to people who have served in the armed forces. So oh. there's a lot of client navigation on this one, mm -hmm. I feel. Yeah. yeah, I think this one has a lot more components to it than some of the other ones. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I appreciate, like I've said so much, this spelling out of the project, but in the short time, I'm not. I'm just catching glimpses, but it's all so interesting, and it really does explain. And I think that is so great for prospective uh, clients and just people who admire your work to really understand all the thought mm -hmm. that goes into it. It's great. I'm curious where the um, pattern, me, like that. where the pattern came from, and if that's something referencing. Um, if you go back up that checkerboard pattern, yeah. If that is referencing. Um, 
you know, the particular like a, area or the patterns that you use for sh- shooting? I'd like to maybe have a guess. Perhaps it's like an easy drinking tabletop wine. Oh, You know, yeah. like a dinner. Cash, but maybe cash even dinner. spelling that Tell out. Tell me from right. Is it cash dinner? <laughs> but spelling that out within um, the project might yeah. be nice because I am curious, you know, how you came to that and what its association see, like, is between the two. It's not fancy. Mm-hmm. It's just feeling good. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Let's go into something else. Okay, great. Oh, we I have love how that. consistent your portfolio yeah. is as well. I think it's rare to find um, designers that have such a specialty. Mm-hmm. Um, so seeing, you know, all of these examples a puts a lot of trust in what I you're do. able to do. This one feels a little different, so let's check that out. I'll just look in the chat. Oh, yeah. If anyone has any questions. Yeah, I would love to hear it. We've only got a couple more minutes to spend with Justin, and then we're going to move on to another um, portfolio. Mm-hmm. Oh, this one's like a... Fancy martini moment. Okay. Oh, so what is this? So it's also yes, all Texan. Mm-hmm. This is very interesting to me. Um, so commissioned to complete everything from initial concept creation to finalizing print and direction for the brand and products moving forward. That's great. These are really juicy, great uh, mm-hmm. projects. And I love just having that brief synopsis of so you know, what the client is and what the, the problem is that you're solving. Yeah. Adult beverage enhancer. Okay. How low? Six different flavors giving a dollar. <laughs> 720 different combinations. All right. So you're really showing the breadth in that image, yeah. which I love to see starting off. Um, and also how it kind of affects the drink, which is nice to see in the styling. Yeah. Um, so well done with that kind of Fun. Initial I'm image. getting the mixologist. I think you've really like look at look at this. It's all just feeling like really light, and really fun. Um, yeah, and you we can, can clearly see like what's in um, each mixer. And again, you're showing your ability for you know comping and photoshopping. Yep. I can see the collage nature in the label, yep. um, as well as you know how you're putting your portfolio together. Um, and yeah, whether is, you're you know, using type a, heavy for such a small vehicle. Yeah, mm-hmm. but whether you're using a mixture of stock imagery or you're styling yourself or you're comping it in, you've done a really nice job. Um, yeah. In whatever way you've put it together, because they feel really cohesive and and well styled across all of them. All right, Justin, um, thank you, thank you, thank you yeah, so thank much. Thank you for submitting. We love seeing your work. Uh, we're definitely going to check out oh, that look. Texas wine next time I'm in town. Have my, um, your and now we're there. going to go into, oh, I'm going to say this name, if you can go back, Aurelia Norkunite. I hope that's correct. Yes, thank I you hope so. Thank you so much thank for you submitting. So much. And she is a self-employed designer and illustrator at AU Room oh, Studio. Oh, and she's joining us from Denmark. Oh, hi. Nice. Wonderful. Okay, so just looking through. All right, so it's a nice mix of design and illustration. illustration for sure. Let's go into some illustration to start. Yeah, I guess. let's do that. I love that. Oh, and maybe even some design and photography. So more styling mm-hmm. and photography. Okay, so let's even just start right here. Let's go here. Okay, lovely. So here, again, I just love when I can read a little bit about a project. So I really appreciate that you're sharing so quickly what it is, how you made it by saying that it's vector right up, and then a little bit about your ideas behind it. So great. Oh, and also that this was really you wanting to learn something new, which I think we this is really great for today because I think that's what we've been talking about is using personal projects as a vehicle to explore some interests that you might have. Okay, let's look. And this is lovely. So oh. this is this is really nice. So this is all vector. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't want to move it from the screen because I want you all to see it. Uh, okay. But um, either way, if you have created these shapes with a vector, um, I love the textures that you've incorporated mm-hmm. here. It feels really tactile in some ways. You know, the shading um, mm-hmm. and different elements you've done across the layers helps to bring a lot of depth to it. Um, I love this sort of light effect that you have coming in, which yeah. also just adds to the depth element. It does. It feels really graphic, but it still really gives you some depth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then what was this, um, the purpose for this illustration? Then we can go up here. So, the yeah. earth elements and emotions. Yeah, just really trying to like take a leap into making some vector art. 
Oh, okay. Yes. So that this, yeah, this is a great Aww. example of you and know evoking the little prince. Yeah, yeah, creating a personal project with you know elements that you love. So mm -hmm. I feel like here you've shown. Oh, um, there's more. Oh yeah, <laughs> you've shown how you work um, with shape and color and texture, which is really great. Um, I like your color sense and I how do. you're sort of splitting that up across the elements. I agree. I, I can like see that. I like that you're bringing a lot of dimension in here with brightness and then bringing the dark in the back. The last texture exactly. step was done. Oh, okay, so you use Photoshop um, to do the texture. That's what I was curious about. I mm -hmm. wonder if you're um, bringing in each individual layer or you're doing um, everything kind of on top in sort of a more painterly way. Oh yeah, um, that I'm sure people would actually be curious because I've actually I've actually kind of gone back and forth with this, whether I'm bringing everything as a, a smart object and creating a layered fire, file from my Illustrator drawings and then having like full flexibility or bringing in a one image from Illustrator. Curious. Curious. Questions. Yeah, but I do love seeing that mix of the different programs. I think that really helps to bring, um, especially vector illustrations to life, having that texture. So yeah. it's great to see. Are there I, more within this project? There aren't, but it's lovely. Okay. okay, so let's move on to, how about we move right here because I think this is a really fun, um, cute, wonderful. Oh. Okay, so this is a really nice nice thing where the props are not in the photo, but they're brought in after, but I think they're brought in really well. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. All right, so you're combining type here. I love this like human scale with the collage. Yeah. I think that's really cool. Um, oh, I'm, we're jumping to Melissa's screen. Okay, then I'm Oh, gonna, are we? Yeah, is that possible? And then I'm gonna jump back in chat so I can oh, see. Oh, sure. Oops. All right, so I have you up here. Our final fashion collection. Oh, okay, so wait, okay. did you also, I'm gonna just read into this, going into the top here, started as an accident. I love how much you talk about your inspiration and sort of where this idea comes from. I think that's like really fun to read, especially for other designers. Oh, awesome. Surreal collage, okay. Yeah. Some of your, oh, I'm curious about your fashion projects. Maybe we'll see more of that in the portfolio, but I love that combination of sort of styling the imagery. Um, yes having your illustrations, which I assume are within this fashion here, and the done, scale is really cool. The scale is really cool. I think you've done an excellent job of bringing, yeah, just really playing with scale and color and the way that they're woven and also um, enhancing the form. I, I graduated think it's really fun. as a fashion designer. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. I love this it when paths take you in different directions, so yeah. it's nice to see how you're combining a lot of different creative pursuits in For here. For sure. You have a beautiful color sense, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you've also considered the set really nicely, mm -hmm. which I know this is an illustration, but it does kind of put it into a context, which is really helpful, yeah. especially for, you know, fashion work. Yeah. Um, so I see here you're integrating it into different shapes. I even honestly really like how you're kind of putting this whole project together. So the way that you're blending the image into the text is like a really nice full experience just, for yeah, people to view. Yeah, these are her clothing. This mm -hmm. is, that's amazing. And then you're adding what this detail here. What a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, so nice. I mean, I'd love to see you know even other versions of the um, or other angles of the clothing if you have them in the same collage style yeah, or even the I styling think it's for lovely. the models. Yeah, I think also, yeah, definitely. Um, it's always great to build out as many images as you can, like fully flesh out that idea, because this is a really lovely one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't be nervous. <laughs> oh, no. No, it's this so great fun. to see you. Thank you. All right, let's jump into another project. Yeah, yeah actually, so I'm curious about have... this other, mm -hmm. just since we're already in the vein about, oh, this is the same one. Sorry. Did you want to look at one? Uh, yeah, what, is that the same one or is that different? Oh, this is the daily challenge. Oh. Oh, wait. Okay, oh yeah, something is funny right there, but if we go down, there was some more with clothing in it. Oh, okay. Oh, so, calling out your model. Oh, okay, oh, so wonderful. this is your fashion work again. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So you are here showing, I believe, inspiration. Mm -hmm. Is that great? I do love to see this. Honestly, yeah. I love to see where people's ideas are it. coming from in mm -hmm. terms of building out a whole case study. And I can really see how you built your color story there. Mm -hmm. Seeing the sketch into the photo is really nice. I love how you're weaving in oh, this wait. collage. We might be misunderstanding. This was a daily challenge. This is a daily challenge as well? Oh. Oh. Well, we can still go through it. <laughs> wow. Okay. 
showing your inspiration board. This is really awesome to see. Yeah. Seeing where all of your um, ideas are coming from and the way that you're picking materials and different colors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is really robust. Yeah, it really is. Oh, beautiful. I mean, I, I think this is definitely more in the fashion realm, so yeah. I'm sure even someone that's kind of in that world would appreciate this even more. But I love seeing it mixed into your design work. Um, yes. I think it does bring out a sensibility of sort of where you're coming from and the way you're representing even the human form here. Yeah. Um, seeing where that comes from is really cool. All right, I'm gonna go, <laughs> let's go into some packaging work. Sure. So you do have a large mix of projects here. A tight project we can all relate to. <laughs> Oh, right. that coat was a present to um, Ariella's, Ari, oh, what? her best friend. Sorry. I'm saying your name wrong and I'm so sorry. Um, all right, so this is a name. logo and a sticker design label for an herbal tea. All right, so you're switching full into design mode here. Great. It's great to see. I, oh, I mean, I love that you I have this collage. I still feel like there's a sensibility, stuff. right? And yeah. a color story that's like kind of running throughout. Yeah. Yeah, seeing this illustration work um, throughout everything really seems to be like the underlying thread, um, which I love, you know, seeing that brought out, whether it's design or fashion or illustration. Um, so it really brings your personality through. I love that this label is really, you know, simple and straightforward and you're really letting that illustration shine. You know what's crazy is we only have two minutes left. Oh. Yeah, we're gonna have to. I think we have um, seven minutes. Oh, really? Oh, 155. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're gonna wrap this up, but I love seeing all this work. All right, so you have the logo here brought out. I do too. <laughs> it's yeah, this is really lovely. Yeah, it's really lovely. I'd almost like to see this um, illustration on its on its own, since it is such a big portion oh, of it. We see the logo. Oh, Do we see it? We just oh, see this just logo part, but mm -hmm. I like that little sort of simple, yeah. simple piece that's brought out. I agree. I would love to see the fall. And then I want to go into this one other branding project that you have, just to see how that illustration style is woven in. Oh, this has more pure photography, Dana Vet. So this is a really straight branding oh. project. Oh, okay, but I do see how you're incorporating your illustration style here um, in a more simplified way, but you still have a really nice um, way of using line and pattern. This mm -hmm. almost looks like some of your fashion illustrations, which is nice to see. I do wonder if, since this is such a clean and simple product, if there is a way to sort of incorporate some of your illustrated style within um, the styling of it or the photography, yeah. just to kind of bring in a little bit of warmth since it is like a very clean kind of sterile product, which I'm sure it needs to be since it's for pets. Um, but I do love how you've brought out all of this um, branding and design work. You're showcasing all of the different types of products and the color within that and how that changes. So there's a system in place there. For sure. Oh, and the markup development. Yeah. And I'm curious if this um, did go to production, maybe even having some of the, you know, the process within that or the mm -hmm. packaging and label design. Um, I think that was something that in the last portfolio in Justin's we saw that was really helpful to see and it really shows how you're part of a larger process. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd love to see that built out, but overall this feels, yeah, yeah really nice. And I love your illustrations yeah, here. Yeah, I do as well. I do agree though that just bringing perhaps a touch of life to the backgrounds. Great. Just add a little more, but thank well, you so much for yeah. sharing your work. Looks like it's time for us to wrap this up. Thank you again to both of you for submitting your portfolios. We loved seeing all of your work. Yeah. Um, it's really inspiring to see what other people are working on and communicating with you in the chat. So thanks again. Yeah, um, and coming right up, we have um, Sam Anderson, who's mm -hmm. gonna be presenting a challenge. And then, as well as Eric Suit. Yes. Um, and we're gonna be back with you tomorrow. We're gonna be talking a little bit more about um, how we work on our client projects and use Photoshop there. Yes. Um, but yeah, stay tuned coming up for um, Sam Anderson doing a talking about the Daily Creative Challenge as well as at noon, we have Eric Sue talking about an XDK study. And thank um, you so much for joining us Yeah, today. thanks again. Uh, <laughs> again, I'm Melissa. Nicole. This is Nicole. We are Party of One Studio. It's been awesome speaking with you. Uh, and we'll see you tomorrow for another two hours. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, everyone in the chat. Thank you.